What's up everybody? Welcome or welcome back to Copper Cactus DIY. I'm Jen and this is my home for all things furniture, from makeovers to restorations, thrift flips, and faux finishing. And this week I'm doing a very special flip. In today's video, I'll be taking part in the Spirit of Christmas collab. This collab was a call to YouTubers and other furniture finishers, and it's hosted by Danny and Sherry, my girls, over at Second Chance Ohana. I'll be refinishing this piece, selling it, and donating the net proceeds to the Association of Arizona Food Banks. As you can see, the piece started out pretty rough, but I can't wait for you to see this get a new life. I'm doing a faux turquoise finish on the drawer and custom mixing some paint for the cabinet. Oh, and I'm attempting to do this entire makeover for under $15 so I can totally maximize my donation. So if you dig videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe and ding that bell so you get notified of all my projects. But for now, let's just get right into this epic transformation of the cabinet hiding under this wrapping paper right here. To start cleaning, I'm actually going to remove the drawer and then I'm actually going to vacuum out the inside on the bottom shelf here because I think that maybe it's a little bit of loose stuff and it would probably be better to get that out of there before I just start washing it. This whole top is too, like all of this brush stroke and stuff. We're fixing everything. I'm gonna clean like I always do by wearing my yellow kitchen gloves. I'm using some warm soapy water. This is just palm olive dish soap, which I find to be an awesome degreaser. And I'm gonna use a clean lint-free rag to remove all of this crud. And that's why we wipe down after we clean with soap. That thing is still kind of gross, so I'm gonna do a second pass with just clean water off camera, let it dry, and then complete the prep. Yeah. Loose edge here. Oh man. Yep, it's glued on with like Elmer's glue. This won't really take very long at all. definitely a crack in this drawer. I don't know, we're gonna see. We're gonna see. Cause it's just, it's, it's nailed in from the sides. I don't wanna remove these nails. They're only, they're tacked into this tiny little thin part right here. And if I remove them, I'm afraid I'm never gonna get this thing back together again. So I'm literally just gonna give this the best possible scrub of its life and then I'll probably have to do some wood fill because I think they put the fabric on because there are so many issues here. We're going to address them all. Clean this puppy up. I actually think this was maybe like wallpaper paste just based on the way the fabric, you can't probably see it on camera but there are indentations in this from the um, weave of the fabric so I think it's wallpaper paste that they put this on with. I'm going to wrap this around and just let it soak for about five minutes and then come back and see if I can either scrape off all this glue or just wipe it off with the rag. But that's two YouTube seconds for you. 
and uh, let's see. Oh, it is loosening up. Okay. Okay, that's good. It is loosening up. Guarantee that's wallpaper paste. Okay. Let's keep that on there though. The water loosened the glue, but not enough. So I pulled out the tough stuff. Goo gone. I applied it to a scrap rag and wiped it across the entire surface. Goo Gone is awesome because it chews through sticky stuff like this, but it's a solvent-based remover and not a low VOC product. I wore my respirator and did this in the garage with all the doors open. The adhesive came up with my Japan scraper, no problem. I used soap and water on clean rags to remove all the residue. Then I did three passes with different rags using less water each time to remove everything. All right, <clears throat> now I'm gonna take it in the sun and leave it to dry. Before I can do anything else with this, I don't want to sand it or anything yet until I address this crack. So I'm just going to use my Type Bond 3. And then I'm just going to use a Japan scraper to kind of open up that crack here. So I can, I can hold it open. And just squeeze glue in. Then I'm going to just use this scraper to like shove the glue in. I don't have a syringe. That's probably something I should invest in soon. All right, now, unfortunately, these huge clamps are the only thing I have that's going to work. Oh, no, look at that. It's perfect. squeeze out out of there. I think I want to apply pressure from the top too. So this can go here. There it is. I might need another one over here. I removed the last bit of glue squeeze out and then left the drawer to dry while I got to sanding the cabinet. I don't necessarily need to get down to raw wood with this piece, but I do want to graduate some grit, so I'm starting with 60 grit, and down to 100, 120, and 220 before I'm done. And I'm using my big respirator, plus my Craftsman Random Orbital. As I sanded, I discovered that my fears were confirmed. This was indeed latex paint. There was only one coat, but it was a very thick coat. The 60 grit took it off without much problem, but I ended up having to go all the way down to raw wood because the edges of the paint, they were kind of rolling up, not feathering out. Normally you can feather out an edge, but sometimes if latex heats up, the edge can start to roll. I used my Black & Decker mouse sander on the smaller edges and on the inside. This sander does really well in corners and on the inside I actually managed to scuff this thing up without tearing into the paint. Gotta say I'm pretty thankful for that small favor because it was a pretty tight squeeze to get into the inside of this cabinet. Once the paint was gone, I graduated up in grit, starting with 120. I actually skipped 100 because the wood wasn't too bad after the 60 grit. And I finished sanding going very slowly using my 220 grit. This is a trick I learned from Angie over at Transcend Furniture Gallery. If you go slow and you don't apply too much pressure, you shouldn't get those sanding swirl marks. It's all about patience. 
but prep is the most important part of a flawless final finish, so I don't mind taking a little bit of extra time. I'm gonna use my Ace Brand wood filler in just the color natural. This will match the pine fine, and it doesn't matter because it's all gonna be under paint. And I'm gonna apply that using my small Japan scraper. I filled any cracks and dings on the sides and front face, and you can see those clamps on top. That's because while sanding, I noticed a fairly large gap where two pieces of wood were starting to come apart. So I got that scraped out, glued, and clamped up. And I did more wood filler on the top once the glue dried. all this to dry and come back in and sand with a 220. I sanded all the filler down to smooth with my orbital. Once it was sanded, I vacuumed out the loose dust, wiped it all down, and then I left it to dry so I could finally get to painting in the morning. I gave the whole piece a coat of folk art chalk in the color oatmeal. Because I'm doing a faux finish and custom mixing a color for the base cabinet, I wanted one consistent color to start from. This is a neutral tan with a slight green undertone and it will work great as a base. I custom mixed this color from Salmon Coral, the very last dredges of what I had liquidy, very watery Java. Vintage mustard, folk art, home decor chalk paint as well. And a Van Dyke Brown universal tint from Golden. I don't do Southwest style very often, but I figured with the turquoise faux finish, Southwest color vibes would work as a really nice contrast. So I started on the bottom just in case, but this was almost the exact color I wanted. A dusty, rosy, almost terracotta vibe, and I really like this folk art chalk paint. The coverage is nice, and I got three light coats out of about eight ounces of paint. I loved the color, so I moved on to paint the whole cabinet. doing a decorative finish on the front of the drawer but on the entire inside and the outside the sides the bottom everything that I coated in this primer base I do want to put an actual color and I thought I'd do something nice and dark like this melange in vagabond blue which I'm sure you're not surprised about if you've been here for a minute I thought that way it would look nice and it could kind of like fade into the distance a little bit inside the drawer I'm using this uh, zebra triangular brush. It's got a real long handle. It's not my favorite handle, I'm not gonna lie, but I do actually really love the brush itself. It deposits paint pretty nicely, and especially like these mineral paints, the bristles are pretty densely packed, so it actually really distributes the paint great, but the handle, she's a little long for my taste. I'll probably just invest in a new zebra at some point. I know they have some of the shorter handle ones, triangular, round. I'd like to try a few, actually. Then I get started on the drawer front. Since I'm doing a faux turquoise, I'll need a few shades. So I'm starting by applying the mid-tone to the entire face. I used a custom mix of folk art chalk paint plus a hint of white craft acrylic just to brighten it up a little bit.
I did two full coats and let them dry for about an hour in between each coat, but I did the second coat off camera. Once everything dried, I could start the decorative painting. I mixed about a three to one ratio of platinum glaze to paint using my lightest and darkest shades. I applied randomly and over the whole face using a damp sea sponge. First, using the lighter highlight color. I made sure to move my hand and the sponge around to avoid obvious patterns. Then I added in the darkest glaze tone in the same way. I tried to keep some of the mid-tone peeking through, but this is going to be a multi-layer finish, so I'll add paint back in on some of the next steps. Turquoise has a lot of small flecks of various lighter and deeper shades. I'm using this picture as a general guide to follow for the veining, the deeper inclusions, and other variations in my faux stone. So I first watered down some brown and then white craft acrylic and used a light tapping motion of the brush handle against my stir stick. The tapping created small dots across the whole piece. I tried to do this before the glaze skinned over completely so the dots would sink in and slightly fade. To get more depth and color variation, as well as pattern variation, I added another layer of paint. This time I'm using a bunched up wet rag, and I add both my mid-tone and the deepest shade to get even more variation. For this I'm using the paint at full strength, no glaze, and only the wet rag to water and thin it out. It might seem like I'm covering everything I just did, but I applied each layer light and broken so some of every layer shows through. It's subtle, but so are the variations in the turquoise part of the real stone. This will help add tons of depth. I let the paint layer dry completely, then came in with a second round of brown and white dots. I tried to make sure the sizes varied, but nothing too big, though any mistakes here can get covered up with the next much darker layer. And because I'm a total pro, I literally forgot to press record when I started this layer. So here's what I did. Using a ragged chip brush, I coated just the ends with black craft acrylic at full strength. Then I tapped onto the surface in a few random blotches. To wash out the paint and then blend it into the turquoise some, I used the same rag that I used to do the mid-tone. I lightly scrubbed it into the spots until it left behind some variation in the black. Then with the chip brush, I dragged darker, thicker veining lines near the edges of the washed out areas and randomly across the entire drawer. Then I watered down the black paint and used an artist brush to lightly drag random lighter and thinner veining lines out and across the whole piece. I tried to pull out from the darker areas, but trying to be as organic as possible. I didn't want anything too matchy-matchy. I made sure to also get the top and side edges. The inclusions in turquoise have a few different shades, so I layered in some small dots of chalk paint in off-white. I used the ragged ends of another chip brush for this step, and I try to stay really tight into the middle of the largest black spots. The final color I added was a gold craft acrylic. In the inspo picture, the gold color deposits nestle into the black and off-white colors, so that's where I focused the dots with my chip brush. But this is a multi-layered finish, like I said, so I didn't stop at just one coat of these three shades. I came back in with black to break up some heavier areas of white and gold. 
I also wanted to add back in some much darker black areas. I ended up going back and forth between black and gold several times until it felt right. The final step was to use the damp sea sponge with some of my mid-tone. This helped to further break up the heavy blotchy look. The sponge was a bit more than damp, but not dripping water. I tapped very light and extremely randomly. Then I let this piece cure overnight. The next morning, I added two thin coats of Helmsman Clear Spray Top Coat in a satin finish. I didn't want to brush over the finish and risk dragging anything across the drawer front. I let each coat dry for about an hour in between, and then I let the entire thing dry to go finish up the cabinet. To protect the piece, I used my Wagner Flexio 3000 and Verthane water-based top coat in a satin finish. I gave the cabinet and drawer two solid coats, and while that dried, I washed the hardware options. Over on Instagram, I asked you all which you'd pick. You'll see which poll won in the beauty shots. But once the top coat dried overnight, my faux turquoise spirit of Christmas piece was complete. I really want to thank Danny and Sherry at Second Chance Ohana for hosting this collab. I had a ton of fun creating this, and it feels so great to give back, especially at this time of year. So I know turquoise isn't super Christmassy, but I wanted to do something very southwest for this piece. And it hasn't sold as of the production of the video, but it's listed for $125. I only spent $11.76 on the cabinet, hardware, and the 5-ish ounces of top coat that I used. So I'm preemptively donating to the Association of Arizona Food Banks, and I'm rounding it up to $115. Don't forget to subscribe below and check out the links to Second Chance Ohana plus the entire Spirit of Christmas playlist down in the description. But that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for being here and watching. Later, peeps. Don't stay up my butt. It's gonna be a sniffly kind of day today. It's only like 60 degrees out right now. Cold, cold. These gloves suck. I need gloves that fit me. Oh my god, these gloves suck. Oh. Oh. Well, I guess we're just gonna see. Please don't drip. Tubers and other furniture. Furniture, sure, furniture. Yeah, take 7,000 or something like that. Whoa, I'm blind. This is take 450,000 for the B-roll portion. Mm -hmm.